I grew up in the neighborhood that, first of all, the first killing that I experienced feet away from me when I went to go get a gallon of milk was only uh, 10 feet away from me. They shot the guy like seven times. They shot him seven times as a young boy. I seen killings after killings after killings. Uh, in order to survive in the streets of the South Bronx, you had to be a killer. You have to be a murderer. You had to be smart. You had to be slick. My father's side it was all witches and warlocks. We, were, we lived on witchcraft. We, lived on, we had a contract direct with the devil himself. My father, I remember when I, used to, when I, was, when I was younger, my, like eight, nine years old, I would see him going to the room to, to worship the devil and I could feel the presence of the devil come into that room. And my father would worship and speak in tongues, in demonic tongues and, and worship and put flowers and put candles and put water. I, at, at seven o'clock at night to five in the morning, I was ready going. To demonic, to demonic church. I was going to witchcraft church. I was, it was, I was being trained to be. I was being trained to be a, 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 a warlock. I was being trained with witches that were in the in the religion for thirty years, forty years, fifty years. They were training. They were training me to learn how to speak to principality spirits in the ground, the devil himself. You couldn't speak to the devil right away. You had to earn your right to speak to the devil. And the first mass killing. The first mass killing that they did in my neighborhood was in this house right here. The husband stabbed the lady 52 times and cut her ears off here. And then me and my brothers were hanging out with their daughter and we came to the house to, to, to walk them back home to, because we were hanging out with the daughters right here. And, uh, and, and the daughters found their mother cut up to pieces here in this house. I was in a schoolyard playing uh, with some friends in the schoolyard and, uh, and the pastor came and uh, they had this band came in and uh, they started singing songs and people started to gather in the schoolyard and it was an amazing uh, atmosphere, you know, amazing joy in that schoolyard and I, and, and I came from a broken home. This pastor is up, up on stage and, and he's, saying, he, he's talking about some Bible story and, and some Bible book and, and he's talking about how God loves everybody and all this other stuff and I'm, for the first time I'm getting kind of captivated wow you know maybe god does love me maybe maybe god wants me maybe god wants my family maybe god wants to touch me and my family maybe he he wants to change my family around and i said well i can get some of that I, i'm going to get some of that because he's coming my way and and this is and, and the first time ever i felt a, an incredible love that was it, it was un, undescribable this pastor's coming off the stage and praying for people and touching people so i said now it's my turn now he's going to touch me now now jesus is going to accept me jesus is going to show me what love is about and this pastor passed me by never touched me never ne ne never never laid his hands on me he went down the line and when he came up to me he passed me by and touched the other person and i said well jesus don't love me either my dad don't love me jesus don't love me we come from a broken home uh jesus he likes the fact my mother gets beat up he likes the fact that me and my brothers go to bed hungry he likes the fact that you know uh <clears throat> there's no heat in my apartment he likes the fact that when we go to school we reject misfits in school. So this Jesus guy, he's just like my father. He's no difference. He's just like my dad. So I went home broken. I went home sad. I remember that a week later, a couple of weeks later, a week later, two weeks later, I was at a schoolyard, hanging out, playing with a friend of mine's, and uh, I heard I heard something whew, fell and hit the ground, and it was a voodoo necklace. So I took the voodoo necklace. It had many colors. I took it. I put it on, and the necklace was my first contract with the devil. We went to a tarot card reading, and when I went to the tarot card reading, uh, as a little boy, at 10 years old, the, we went in, the lady that was doing the tarot card, the witch lady that was doing the tarot card reading, she got fascinated, her eyes were fixed on me, and she told this boy, got this boy, we want him, we want him, we want him, we, 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 the, 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 uh, uh, the reachers, which is Santeria, uh, want him, uh, spiritualism, which is spir spiritualism, is espiritismo in Spanish, Santeria, is, is, they call it worship of the saints, but it's not worship of the saints, worship of demons, we want him. And if you don't give it to us, he's going to lose his eyesight in 30 days. So my mother was so desperate as a mother. Uh, my mother saw her furniture. My mother saw her bed. She saw her, her, her bedroom set to get $250 to do my first ceremony because this lady put so much fear in us, so much fear in my mother. Then my mother had to sleep in the floor because there was no bedroom for her to sleep in because she didn't want me to lose my eyesight. So they initiated me to the dark side at the age of 10 years old. So the, the, the first love, the first encounter I had, as a 10 year old boy with the devil showed up and took the offering of giving my life to him and they put five bees around my neck the five worst devil worst, the five worst demons of principalities that are under satan they put them right under my neck which is santeria they put them right under my neck and they said these are going to be your, 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 your spiritual guys and this is going to be your guardian angels and they're going to take care of your life from now on 
this is the building, this corner building here used to be almost abandoned, the corner building here, this, it's in the book. That I used to go up and down, me and my brother used to go to get the water and the pump, they got the pump right there. All the apartment was all empty, the apartments, every, all the apartments were abandoned, over here. Only me and, my, me and my family and two other families lived here. And my whole childhood was stolen. My whole childhood was worshiping the devil, going to demon church. I would go to demon church from seven in the evening to five in the morning, being trained by witches and warlocks, colors, principal <clears throat> rights. Who owns this region? Who's in this region? Who's running this principality? What principality name is this? I, I had, I had uh, how to channel powers. At the age of 13 years old, I was astral projecting my body. I would leave my body home and go to regions and go into the spirit and curse dark side, curse neighborhoods, curse put spirit of prostitution, spirit of drugs into the neighborhood, homosexual spirits here, demonic spirit here, spirit of murder, spirit of suicide. I know how to channel all those spirits into the neighborhood. At the age of 15, 16 years old, I was going into hospitals and putting death in ICU, death in one room so this person can die because I wanted to be promoted with the devil to move up that ranks to be the biggest devil worshiper in New York City. The devil became my daddy. He replaced my dad because I prayed and I said, you kill my dad. At the age of 33 years old, my dad got shot in a nightclub in the face of a woman that wasn't even his when he had a good woman home. And the devil took him out. The devil said, I replaced the old to keep the new. And the devil became my daddy. There was a club here and my father died there at 33 years old. And we lived over there. And then when, remember that I lived, when I was 11 years old, 11 year old boy, there was a store right here in the corner. And the guy got shot right there in the street right there, right next to the little corner here. The guy got killed there when I went to get the gallon of milk. And I moved up the ranks from devil worshiping. I moved up the ranks. I moved up with principalities and demons to the point that I was able to sit with the devil like I'm sitting with you today. And the devil manifests himself in human form. He or the president will come into the room and I will speak to the devil all night long. And he will give me assignments. I will go to five clubs or five languages a night to look for people to recruit to the dark side. I would tell people their fortune. I would tell people their lives. I would tell people things that they did, things that was gonna happen to them, that then they had no clue who I was. They didn't know who I was. I just had the demonic powers. I had a taste for blood. I would, I would kill animals and drink the blood every week. I would, if I didn't have money to, if I didn't have time to buy an animal, I would cut myself and drink my own blood. The ring of, 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 of the people that I was with that was in this demonic world, doctors, lawyers, uh, principals, judges, police officers, they were all into witchcraft. There was all, even singers today that are very well known. I put them, I, I would move principalities on that region to control uh, demons on the ground to operate the church, to cut down the church, to cut down the, the, the growth of the church, to cut down the, 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 the opportunity for people to get saved. I would, I would be drunk, I'd come out of a club and I would have demon possessed, drunk, I would stand in the middle of the street and say, to God, come down. You want some of this? You want me to slap you in your face? You want me to spit you in your face? You come and mess with me. I, I got married on Halloween. I had a demonic wedding on Halloween. I got married on Halloween. All the demons and principalities from different world, from different regions of, around the world came to my wedding. No human beings came to my wedding. They were afraid to come to my wedding. So I had a crazy, I sent out invitations. No one showed up, <laughs> you know? So there were, no, there were no wedding gifts, but demons came to my wedding and baptized my wedding. So my wife was a witch, I was a witch. And then my daughter was born and I was training her to be a witch too. I remember the first time that I was gonna sacrifice my first human being. The devil was sitting in the passenger side of my car when I parked. He said, you love me? I said, of course I love you, daddy. He said, there's a guy on the rooftop. He's trying to, he's trying to, he's, he's gonna to try to take you and take your money or hurt you. You kill him if you love me. So when I went up there to the rooftop, uh, I lived on the 12th floor, I remember that. And when I went up to the rooftop, I remember the part, the part that he was hiding behind, uh, he was hiding behind the stairway. And this guy was like six five. 250 pounds. I was half demon possessed. I felt that the, the, the demon within me and I, it wasn't even me anymore. So I was going to drag him into my apartment and stab him in the neck because I had a car drone pop with way about, way about 100 pounds plus and I had, I had like nine machetes in it and I had knives in it that I used to kill the roosters with. But when I went to grab this guy that I, I wanted to bring him to my apartment, he just went off my hands and just disappeared. He went down the, the, the story. I mean, this guy was like an Olympic athlete. He just, whoosh, he did just gone, disappeared and I couldn't grab him and kill him. So I was very disappointed that I couldn't kill my first human being. People go over to the city over. right here. This is the demon that runs the gates of hell. This is the one I was telling you about that is in my book. It's a little demon. Give another one. Give another one. This is the demon that runs Haiti. 
Here's the poly overheating. The one that's overheating, here's the poly overheating. And I, and I look at this. The truth. <laughs> Isn't that funny? The truth. What set you free? I mean, ain't this, ain't this, a, ain't this a, a, a joke? They put it up there so people can think that they're part of uh, the part of this. What is this place? This is this is the Botanica. This is the place that these people, every everyone in the Bronx come here to buy the ingredients to do witchcraft and hurt people and kill people. This is the place. We can go inside. Come on, let's see if we can find something. If I tell you I was gonna kill you in 30 days, you prepare your funeral, you was gonna die in 30 days. If, if you, I don't care who you were, I don't care who you knew, I don't care what you, you call yourself, if you were Catholic and you say you were Christian and you say you were a believer, I was gonna kill you unless you had a real relationship with Jesus Christ. And the lady that lived downstairs, she came up and she told me, my husband is cheating, I want you to kill the woman that she's cheating with. Put a witchcraft spell on her and kill her. How much you charge me? I said, well, come back, I'm gonna to speak to the devil, my daddy. For, uh, and, and I'll let you know, come back in a couple of days. So the lady came back, the devil told me what to buy. He said, buy a coffin box, buy 21 black candles, uh, buy an image of the lady, put her in the box, you know, to do the witchcraft, to kill this lady. So we were gonna do her, for 21 days, she was gonna die. After 21 days, we were gonna do her funeral. So when the lady came to my house, I said, I'm gonna charge you $10,000, I told her, to kill the lady. She said, sure. She said, I'll tell you what, I know you. You've been good to me, I go to your house parties. Give me $7,000, I'll give you 30% off. I said, I'll kill her. I give me 30%, I take 30% off the 10. Give me, give me 7,000. So when the lady was gonna leave my house, she said, by the way, she's a, she's a Christian. She said, the lady's a Christian. I said, I'll kill her for free. I said, I don't need the money. I said, I'm gonna kill her for free. I'm gonna teach these Christians a lesson that they're, never, they're gonna learn. I'll kill her for free. I told her, I don't want your money. I'll kill her for free. So I did the voodoo thing, I did the, the witchcraft thing, and 21 days went by, the lady didn't die. Uh, 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 a month went by, the lady didn't die. And, and I was like, wow, you know, what's going on? I mean, my reputation's online. So I called the devil, I called the demons that was signed. I, I increased the, the witchcraft. I increased the witchcraft. To, I doubled the witchcraft on it so she can die like overnight. Nothing was going on, nothing was going on. I was home at night and the devil shows up. And I feel the presence of the devil comes into my mouth. And then uh, the devil told me, we have to abort the plan that the lady that you want to kill. And I said, why would we want to abort the plan? My reputation's online. I'm a witch, I'm a, I'm a warlock. If I don't kill the lady, they're gonna think that I don't have any powers. The devil said, you don't, you don't understand. The God that she serves said, don't leave, leave her alone. Don't touch her. And I said, who's this God? She said, the God that she serves. So I, 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 I was so angry. I was so, I said, no, but let's get one more week. Let's kill her. And he said, no, the God that she serves said, leave her alone. From the, the witchcraft that I did to the lady, she should have been dead in less than 21 days. How you doing, man? It's gonna crack me when I see it. This is Jezebel. This is Jezebel in religion. This, this is by what? See, these statues here, this is not me nothing. But it's a demon behind me. So, so, to, so in order for me to identify to this, this has to be created because I can't identify to a spirit. I can't identify to because the spirit, we don't have nothing in common. I'm humanity. A spirit is immortality. A spirit is a spirit of demon. I can't relate to it. So in order for me to relate to it, he has to put this guy in the middle so I can relate to it because it's human form. He looks like a human being. There's a story behind this guy, so now I can relate to it. So the demon operates to him. You understand? Same thing with these guys. And then they give themselves names and dates and birthdays. Get this, this is another, how the American Indians get caught up with demonic forces and they get, they get caught up into the occult. This is the teacher they attract them, but they're Native American Indians. But those are statues that the people that use to camouflage the demonic ways and demonic religion. There's nothing here that is holy. There's nothing here. The only thing that's holy here is us standing here. Mm. What happens in this place? Like this what? place here in the back, they do witchcraft, they do voodoo, they do, they do, they do witch spells in the back, they do cleanse in the back. Over here, they, all these demons, they want you to buy these statues so you can take a demon home. They select the prayers. Mm. So they, they make you believe that you're praying to God. Look, see, I used to, I used to use this book for selected prayers. They make you think that you're praying to God, but these prayers are not, God, they're not godly prayers. There's nothing in the Bible, they say nothing about the Bible, the crucifixion. We had a book in New York, in, in America. I was the third person to get this book that has symbols of the book, of different demons, of different principality, of different way of killing people through witchcraft. And, and this book was so, no one had, had a copy of this book. You couldn't have a copy of this book unless the devil signed off on it. 
And I was the third person that received that book. And I would take symbols from that book and do witchcraft to people and put people in, 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 uh, make people lose their mind. I put witchcraft on people, make people get diseases out of nowhere. I put witchcraft on people, make people get leprosy. I put witchcraft on people, make people get cancer. I mean, I did witchcraft to people. I gave people miscarriages. I gave people abortions. I gave people, I put people in hospital for, for, non, for surgeries that didn't even have to go surgeries. I did witchcraft so people can lose their minds. I, I put spirits of, of, of bipolar, fichophrenia. I put spirits of, 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 of disease on people. I put suicide spirits on people. I'd be up all night long praying and talking to the devil. When Christians can't even go to church for one, year, for one hour. When Christians can't even pray for one hour. The spirit realm is, so, is more real than the natural realm. And, and we fail to see that. And whatever is not covered with Jesus Christ is an easy target to bring down. Like the atheists, I can kill them easily. They were easy to kill. The, the, the Jehovah Witness were easy to destroy. Uh, Moment later, it was easy to destroy. Uh, the, 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 per, the people that would walk around and say, we don't believe in the devil, they were easy to destroy because they will not seek any spiritual help. I remember a time that Nikki Cruz came to, uh, Nikki Cruz group came into my neighborhood and uh, it's called Truce. They would come and do drive-bys in my neighborhood. They would do like worship and then they would preach a word and go to another corner and do the same thing. And I, I came after this group to try to put them, to try to bring them down, this group. And they were young kids. They were like 18, 17, 16, 20. I mean, so I said, how did they, they play this junk, this filthy music in my neighborhood, with, today we call worship. This filthy music in my neighborhood. I'm going to go after them. I'm going to destroy these kids. So when I went up to, when I went up to, uh, when, I, when I went up to uh, where they were at, there was a wall of fire around them. I couldn't penetrate and touch them. And it was something pushed me back. Every time I tried to throw demonic forces again, there was something that would just push me back. And I was able to touch these kids. And I said, there was something here. It's, it's not right. Something is not falling into place. So I walked away and I left them alone. I didn't want to deal with them. I said, okay, you know, they won, the, they won this first round. So there's obviously spirits here watching us. Yeah, oh yeah, not oh yeah, happy, watching right? us. Yeah, of course they're watching us. Yeah, and so we're all protected. We're yeah, all, we're protected. Yeah, we're yeah. under the blood, brother. Yeah. They're not like the blood of Jesus. Yeah, okay. Right, man? Yeah, we're all good. protected, but they're not they can touch us. Because mm. Joe said, what we got, we got a hedge of protection mm. around us. Right. And we can walk into this place, and we can chase demons out of here. We can, we, can, we can curse this place to the ground in Jesus' name. And there's nothing that the devil can do. Mm. I mean, I have so much money. Beautiful cars, beautiful woman. I had it all. I lived in a world that people, my neighborhood was, they, my neighborhood, they were terrified who I was. They said, we met, if you mess with that guy, your family will die. If you mess with that guy, he don't need a gun. He'll kill your family in his sleep. My daddy was awesome. My daddy was, he, he knew, he had, he gave me powers beyond I could imagine. He gave me powers that people had fear in me. The police had fear in me. The securities in my neighborhood had fear in me. And people that knew that I was, a, I was, a, I was a, a, the devil, they would call me the devil's son. I brought Christians to their knees, not to prayer, because they had no power. It, it, it wasn't because your God wasn't all-powerful. Don't get me wrong. Because your God was all-powerful, the vessel was weak. The vessel had no prayer life, the prayer had no fasting life, and they had no relationship with God. There was a form of godliness in the person, but no power. The person was weak. The person had nothing going. He had a Bible, he had the right suit on, she had the right dress on, but there was no connection with Jesus Christ because you was out of his will you was out of his promises and you was out of his divine purpose and I had you I own you I had you as a slave I broke you I put witchcraft on you I kept doing that to Christian after Christian after Christian after families after churches I chased everything down that represent the cross of Jesus Christ very demonic place so that place has an effect on the whole neighborhood, the you're whole saying? Oh yeah, of course. Oh, that, 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 that just had this whole, this whole region on lockdown. That's the devil's throne. We just went into the devil's throne. Hmm. That, that throne been there since the 80s. And then they go there, spend, they spend $100, $200 buying all these things. And, and then they broke their, their, their own welfare, public assistance, but they got money to buy all this junk. But they think their life is going to get better. They think that their life is going to improve. They think that they're, they're going to make progress in life. They think that they're going to break generational curses, curses. They think they're going to break, you know, vex, you know, vex spells, voodoo. They think they're going to break all that. And basically, God said, I come. I do it for you for free. Just give your life to me, and I'll set you free. But they don't want that. That's too difficult for them. That's too complicated for them. But they can walk into a place like this and drop $200 to think that their life is going to be free. And they're going to live a life in abundance. I had contact with the principality that runs Haiti. His name is Candelo. 
I had contact with home. I had contact with demons in Miami. I had contact with demons in Africa. I had contact with demons here in New York City. Principalities that run the crossroads of the world here on Forty Second Street. Okay, there's a different principality that run the crossroads of the world here on Forty Second Street than the ones that try to run here in this neighborhood. I was. I didn't have a conscience. I, I remember I did witchcraft to my brother and I put him in jail for five years. The witchcraft that into my own brother, my own flesh and blood. I did witchcraft to him. I put him in jail for five years. I did. My other brother that was a warlock. He came into my house one time with an attitude and, and, and the demon jumped on him. And he ran out the house. He couldn't hold the pain in his stomach. My mother can bear witness to that. I did so much ceremonies in my body. I did, I did, I did so much ceremonies in my body. The last ceremony I did was not only sell my soul to the devil. I did a ceremony that I had to swallow uh, animal blood and gunpowder. It was called Sansi. Sansi is a ceremony of, of, of Haitian and French. That you do the ceremony with a demon. That, so when I go to people's houses and eat, they can't put witchcraft on the food. I did that kind. Of, I had. I did all the ceremonies you can do. I knew. I. I will. I will go to Demon Church, and every year we will have a meeting, a secret meeting. All the high witches and warlock will have this meeting to find out what usher, what principality we were going to usher out and bring in to run the region. We will. We were more organized than the church itself. The kingdom of darkness was more organized than the Church of Jesus Christ. We knew how to do ceremonies. We knew how to do things before the year was over to prepare ourselves for the next year. When Christians couldn't go to church and pray for one hour. When Christians couldn't go to church and, and have a consistent relationship with God. I even took a sabbatical from witchcraft. And the devil punishment took my eyesight for one year. I was completely blind for one year. Registered with the commission of the blind. I was completely blind. They was training me to use an eye-seeing dog. And they was training me to use one of these sticks that you use that you walk the streets with. I was, my mother took care of me for one year. My eyes went black. And a mist of gray went over my eyes. I was completely blind. And when I gave my life back to the devil, after seven surgeries, the devil gave me back my eyesight. And I could see again. And, I, and that was my punishment for taking, for taking a, one year off. I wanted to take off the devil. The devil said, you want one year off? I'll give it to you. He took my eyesight. And that's the world I lived in. If, if you mess with the devil, he'll kill you. He'll kill your family. It was a fear that will grip you beyond measure that you could not leave this religion. You cannot leave Santeria, you cannot leave Paloma Nyumbe, and you cannot leave spiritualism. The doctors cannot explain how I lost my eyesight. Meanwhile, Christians, and I was like, why Christians do bad? And Christians sometimes miss the mark, and the only thing that shows up in their house is grace and mercy. When you show up with the devil, and you do something the devil don't like, he kills someone, he kills your family member. And when the, I remember the devil warned this lady, she said, you can't be with that person no more. And she didn't want to, she didn't care because she was in love with the person. The devil demon possessed a homeless guy in the street. He took a hammer, hit her 17 times over her head, killed her. One day I was sitting home, and it was amazing. I came from a nightclub the night before. I was sitting home watching a show called Jerry Springer. I know a crazy show. People beat each other up. I, I, I get joy out of that. I was getting joy out of that, laughing. For the first time, I heard a voice say to me, son, I am coming soon. What are you going to do with your life? I order a voice, shot from, a, from across the room. And that door was the TV that was talking to me. And I said, no, this is a, can't be the TV because these people are beating each other up. This voice, I knew the voice of the devil. I would sit with the devil like I'm sitting with you today. And he would come into human form. He would come in the, the room. He'll, he'll come in sometime. The presence of him will come into the room. The atmosphere changes. And I know he was sitting with me and he was talking to my conscience and we would talk back and talk all night long. I knew that too. I knew it like you knew the back of your hand. I knew every demon, every principality that ran the region, ran everything in America, everything in Canada, everything that ran. I knew every principality that ran every occult, Wicca, New Age, Buddhism, Islam, uh, Santeria, spiritualism. I knew every principality that ran. I had a contract with every principality. With them, I had straight A marks for every principality, every demon on the ground, the devil, Jezebel. I had every, I had, I had new demons that I can't even tell your name because you want to know who they are. I knew them all by name. And this voice was very different than any other voice. When I heard that voice come out of nowhere, it came out of the air, the voice. And I, and I, I, I went into shock. And then I saw, I, and then I saw a vision from from the other side of the apartment that the, the sky was on fire and people underneath. I saw people running for cover, but there was no cover where to hide. And I said, why would I see that vision? So I shook it off. But I remember I went to sleep, and I could, like a deep sleep. I just, like someone put on a t-shirt and I went to sleep. I ended up in a train full of people. I couldn't believe it. I was in a train full of people. 
and his chin was going faster than you can ever imagine. I've never been on something this fast on earth. And they went into hell. And Jesus Christ took me to hell. And when I got to hell, the doors opened. I mean, there was a slam in the doors. There was an unspeakable echo. The, 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 the doors opened. And there was heat that came out of nowhere. That I, It felt like you were going to suffocate the heat that came out. And I ran in, I got out the train. And the people in the train, they, they had no faces. But you could see the fear on the people on the train. You could feel the fear, the impact of the fear that they were going to a place that they were never going to return. And the place was packed. And then I, I, I tried, I said, I can't die here. I said, I can't die. This is not for me. I wasn't born to be in this place. And I was saying this to myself. I was not born to be here. So I tried to find out the tunnel, like a tunnel in hell. And I was walking to the tunnel. I was trying to run to the tunnels in hell, try to find a door, maybe a window. M maybe uh, maybe uh, there was a gap somewhere that I can come out and come back to reality. But there was no gap. And I remember as, I, as, as, as the more I went to, into, into the tunnels, the more the fear gripped me, the more the more the more the suffering, I heard suffering, darkness drapes over you. This fear drapes over like, like you're wearing a garment. This fear drapes over you. It's something you can't even control, you have no control over. It's something like it, it, it grabs you, that it don't it don't even let you go. I couldn't see the hand in front of my face. But I hear the wailing. I hear wailing. Like you ever hear like a kid wail and an animal wail at the same time? Like you, it's, it's like that kind of wailing. It came, it's undescribable. And and and, and 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 it was a heat and a smell that was like like, like if you was like in the sewers of the gutters of New York City. But, I mean, but, but, but crazy in that. And, 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 and then, and then I, 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 I came to a part of, of, of the tunnel, the devil showed up. He said, I, I, I was your daddy. He spoke to me in the amount of time. I was your daddy. I gave you everything you needed. I took care of you. I blessed you. I protected you. I, did, I killed people for you. I did everything. I gave you powers. I gave you a name in the, dark, in the kingdom of darkness. I gave you a name. When people came against you, I destroyed them because I knew that you were going to be the vessel that I was going to use to move my kingdom on the earth. And now you want to leave me? Now you want to betray me? In demonic tongues. And I'm talking to him back in demonic tongues and telling him, no, I'm not leaving. I'm just confused. I don't know what's going on. And he said, no, I know what you're going to do. You're going to leave me and you're going to expose my religion. You're going to expose who I am and how I operate in the rip in the spirit realm. You, because I taught you things that I never taught no one else. I show you things. I trusted you with the things that I needed you to know so you can further my kingdom because I wanted to use you in a greater measure way. And, 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 and the confused, he went to grab me. As he went to grab me to destroy me, the cross of Jesus Christ appeared in hell. I didn't understand how a, two, a three foot cross appeared in hell when I was wearing the blue shorts and a t shirt. And I put it on him. And when I put it on him, the devil melt like he was a, like he was an infant. Like an infant. He melt and fell on the floor, like no powers. So I, I, I took that opportunity and I ran in back and I ran deeper into the gates. I ran deeper into the tunnels of hell, hoping that there was a door. I had, my hope was being, it was a hope and no hope at all. There was no place to say, I'm coming out of here. This is it, this, 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 this is the end. I, 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 had a, I had a fear that gripped me that I was undescribable. I never felt a fear like that. I never felt, I never felt a, a, a despair. It was the opposite of what heaven is. Uh, it, it was opposite of joy. It was opposite of gladness. It was opposite of peace. It was opposite of light from darkness. It was a place of torment, a place of, I, 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 if I'm here, my family don't know I'm here. My daughter don't know I'm here. How would they find me? How would they look for me? So as I, as I went deep into the tunnel of hell, hoping that there was a door, a window, a crack somewhere that I can get out, the devil showed up again, so now we'll destroy you. So what I did was, I told him in the demonic language, I got these marks, these are my contract to protect me, to destroy you. He said, fool, I gave you those marks. Those are my marks that I own you. I own you. No one owns you. I do. And you're going to live for me or you die. And when he went to Grammy the second time around, I said, it's finished. I said, yeah, this is it. He went to Grammy the second time around. The cross of Jesus Christ. Here. In hell. There's no greater love than the cross that would come for a sinner like me in hell. So when David say, if I make my bed in hell, he knows I'm there. Grace and mercy showed up in hell. Grace and mercy knew my address. Grace and mercy have a plan for my life. To my unspeakable, demonic, selfish ways, arrogant, self-centered ways in hell, when I was done for the count, 
Jesus Christ loved the misfit and he said I have a plan for you I love you beyond you can ever imagine and he showed up in hell and when I woke up then my spirit came back into my body I woke up and I bent my knee to Jesus Christ I had a hundred thousand dollar witchcraft stuff in my house I threw witchcraft away I threw religion away I threw everything that had to do with darkness away the, the people from Haiti the people from Cuba the people from Miami and New York said we have to kill him because he knows too much we have to destroy him we have to kill him because he knows too much he's not one of us anymore and they came for the kill they came they did their best they came for the kill I will sleep during the day to a stay at night when the demons show up and tormented me for 30 days they tormented me for 30 days. They would grab me by my throat, pick me off my bed. The room would go cold. I would lay in my bed. I felt another person lay next to me, ice cold, under the person. I would look like this and I can feel the presence that it was the devil himself right in my bed. For 30 days, on and off, on and off, tormenting, torture, trying to steal my mind, trying to rip my soul out of my body, trying to rip my spirit out of my body. I would, I would tremble at night, like never trembled before, 30 days, and I would cry out. I didn't know how to pray. I said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. They know how to pray. I said, maybe I pray like my sister prays. I heard her in church. She prayed this way. I heard that person pray this way. I would bring all these prayers together to try to put them together like a puzzle to try to fight for my life. And one day I was, I was, I was in church worshiping and, and, I, and I would ask the Lord, Lord, why are you letting people, why you let this happen to me? And one day I heard the voice of God again. He said, I wanted to see how much you love me. And he said, I wanted to see how much you trust me. And ever again, I was tormented by the devil. And I became an evangelist for Jesus Christ. 14 years serving the Lord, and I will never trade it for nothing in the world. And I know that in somewhere in Hallelujah Boulevard, there is a mansion for John Ramirez. And one day it says, welcome home, well done, faithful servant. And I tell you, there's nothing. And I'm not talking about Christianity, I'm talking about relationship with Jesus Christ. He is my Lord, Mr. He is my beginning, and then a weapon formed against me wherever possible. I die. When Jesus said I go home. Not because of a witch, not because of a person, not because of heck, voodoo, vex, incantation, none of that can separate me from the love of God. Hundred thousand dollars of witchcraft, selling my soul, marks here, marks here, marks here. But the biggest mark is here, is the love that I have for the cross. And nothing like the cross of Jesus Christ. And I tell you this, and I end with this. I was cursed, I became blessed because the one that was blessed became cursed for me. And I switched daddies. And my daddy sits in the universe. And he loves me beyond I could imagine. And that love now I can give to my daughter. And my daughter today, she's a born again Christian, graduated from college, psychology major. And I know that God's gonna use her in a greater way because the baton that I have, I will pass to her, the right baton this time. And I know she'll do a greater exploit than her daddy. And before I leave the earth, people will know that John Romero was here because he served a mighty God. Amen.